right. welcome guys. Thank you uh, for coming on in. Looks like we've got uh, one administrative item on the uh, agenda today. Uh, so this meeting is our administrative review meeting for August 3rd, 2022. Um, we've got two things on the agenda. Uh, the one is, uh, looks like Smith Estate Subdivision. And then uh, before that, the first one is minutes. But um, June, I'm gonna table taking action on the minutes because I wasn't here in the last meeting. So I'll defer that. Is there anybody waiting for the approval of minutes? No, that you're I'm aware of? Of. Okay. So I'm gonna table that until next meeting and let Rick take care of that. So we'll go straight into uh, administrative item. Uh, number one, this is uh, UBS 070922, consideration and action on a request for approval of Smith Estate subdivision consisting of one residential lot. Looks like you guys are going big, one lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, Felix, do you want to walk me through the staff report and sure. uh, and then I'll, I'll ask you guys questions and then sure. Uh, hopefully this meeting doesn't uh, have to take, take us too long. Yeah, yeah. So this is a, a request for a uh, one lot, single lot sub, and the sub is actually ten acres, pretty good size. Um, it well exceeds the requirements for the AB three zone. Um, it's located roughly. Um, it's in the Ogden Valley, and it's in Huntsville. It's uh, 74 ninety five east, five hundred north, um, and that's the that's the address. And here we have, um, so the the request is um, to create a residential lot. Um, and what they what they've been working on is um, satisfying the comments they have to date, which include surveying comments, planning, engineering, uh, health department, and they they've actually uploaded that final plat with all those revisions up to frontier it's not included in the report but they have a copy a hard copy of it here if, we, if you want to look at it so it's smith estate subdivision will be serviced by a private well the well's been dug and tested and approved through the health department the septic system um, they do have septic feasibility for the health department and the 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 well um, the well will be their primary source for culinary water, and you, I believe this this property does include, or you do own some water rights with it. We have four shares of no, no. Okay. Yeah. And um, will those stay in the in the ditch system, or will those go to the well? It's actually not a ditch system. Oh. It's piped in. Okay. It's under a pressure. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And so there's your irrigation water requirements satisfied. Um, you know, like I said, this, the, the comments we've gathered from county review agencies are all pretty straightforward. Most of them have already been taken care of with the revised plat. Um, staff felt like it's a good time to get them before the administrative approval meeting for, for, um, consideration on final approval uh there 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 is a condition included with the staff report that the owner shall enter into a parole agreement for curb gutter and sidewalk and that's pretty standard for uh developments and what that is is basically at the time when the facilities for curb gutter and sidewalk are in in place um you would bear some responsibility for just the area fronting your property for the curb gutter and sidewalk. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, I'm glad you said that. That clears up a lot. Yeah. yeah. And if it ever occurs, there's no guarantee that uh, we'll be looking for a curb gutter and sidewalk in that area. I think at some point in time we'll probably want sidewalk or a pathway or something. But one of the standards, the street right of cross section standards that we're trying to get adopted wouldn't even include curb and gutter, just a drainage swell. So kind of that as rural as we can, especially considering 10 acre lots. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that pretty much concludes what I had, you know, just kind of the basic rundown, but um, yeah, that's it. And a little bit about uh, public right of way opportunities. Yeah, and so in this case, what, what they've been able to do is show um, 
a 66 foot potential area for right of way and they've also they've also indicated a 20 foot setback area okay. both of those areas are labeled as no build areas okay um so we, we won't be asking for dedication or easements or anything at this time it's just mainly preserving space yeah i think that's a great idea can i ask a question about that yeah please it, it, just uh, i guess because we we have a, a lot right next to us and where this easement or where this road dedication is going to is actually frank clausen's property behind behind us okay that's where it's headed to but uh i guess my my kind of my question is uh we're bearing 86 feet on our property between the setback and the uh, and the, the right away yeah and i guess i'm like i i just don't think it's fair yeah that we're having to bear that entire uh burden burden thank you yeah well, you're i i see exactly what you're saying so from what i understand we're not getting dedication right mm -hmm. okay so what that means in the future if the county ever decides there needs to be a road right there mm -hmm. we're gonna have to come and purchase it from you guys um, and when we go to come to purchase it from you guys, we're probably not going to want to buy uh, all of it. Uh, we'll probably want to straddle the property line just because that fairness factor uh, is there. Um, there's no, you guys aren't giving up any rights right now. All, all we're doing on the plat or all you're doing on the plat uh, at our request is showing space for where a road could potentially go. The road won't come to fruition until you guys decide to develop your land further. Okay. It, I guess that brings up the question. So we can't build on that. If I wanted to put a hay barn over in that corner, I can't do it. Right. Uh, we could. Now, there are some options. We can certainly talk through some of the different options. Um, uh, the deferral agreement for curb and sidewalk, we could certainly extend that to um, the potential demolition of, of buildings if a road was ever needed to go through that area. Um, but the, I mean, the challenge is, is you spend the money on an accessory building and then you spend the money to tear the accessory building down for the, for the purpose of a public roadway. What we're trying to do is just reserve a spot for 50 years, 100 years down the road you guys may decide to develop and uh, divide out for you know kids or whatever, or sell and someone will divide out for kids. And we just wanna make sure that there's road rights for that have been reserved. Okay. Oftentimes we actually ask for dedication of it so that we own that stretch, uh, that strip of land. Um, we're not asking for that. My understanding is mm -hmm. in this situation, we're not asking for that because you're in a ten acre lot. You've got the ability to put two more houses and two more lots on there. Okay. And at that time, that's when we come to you and say, um, you, you need to develop your frontage for these extra lots, which the burden to build that was would be on your shoulders. There. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we do is we try and address the road width with the people who are asking for a development opportunity today. So when the neighbors or the guys behind decide to come in for development, if they came in first, we would have asked it of them. At the end of the day, if we ask it of you and then we go ask it of them, we've got double what we need, right? And at that point, we would come back and amend or adjust your plat and uh, adjust theirs so that both sides are very proportionate. Um, the reason why we do it that way is because if they're just going to farm land, not do any kind of development or whatever, whatever for the next 50 years, 20, 50 years, 100 years from now, the realization of a road going there is not going to happen. Um, but it could potentially happen where you're developing now. Um, oftentimes that kind of um, that kind of denotes that there's possible development opportunities in the future. Let's just say development interest okay. in that particular parcel. Yeah. And so we want to just kind of reserve that. But again, it's for less <laughs> the setback so that we're not tearing buildings down at the time we uh, put a road in. Is that is that okay? I mean, is there? No, I understand that now. Okay. I, you know that I just was a little confused as to why we were bearing that burden. Yeah. You know, and because well, the lot next to us is very skinny. It's very oh narrow. So you can pull the look at the plat map up. Okay, let's see. Is it 
less than 150 feet? Uh, that I don't know. What side of the lot are? Uh, are we it's the at? west. On the west side. On the west side. How long have you guys on the property? Uh, we're going on four years. Okay. Um, have you guys been in the valley uh, before that time? Did you yes. have a in the valley before? Oh, we, okay. we own the home over in Heritage Knowles. Okay. Okay. The reason I ask the question is because um, there has been, uh, I don't want to say a lot, but I, I would say a, a weird amount of development interest in this area right here. And where it's three acre minimum, I mean, that's why I can't say it's a lot of development interest because you know, there's not a ton that you could do out there. Yeah. But we know people who live, there are some people who live on Stoker Lane who are adamant that Stoker Lane is not a public right of way. However, we've got several different one, two, three acre, or, or sorry, one, two or three lot subdivisions all the way down Stoker that have dedicated their portion for a public right of way. Okay. Um, we've had conversations with Actually, these guys are going to develop here. I think they're doing eight or ten lots. We've had conversations with landowners here, I believe here and here, about the possibility of putting some lots in. And you guys are here? No, we're right there. Okay. <laughs> see that lot right next to us? Is, you can see how narrow that is. Mm -hmm. Let's see, pull up the plant for that one. Just want to do it. Okay, sure. There's no dashed, not too many dashed pages. Also, this one. Council Facts, I think. Yeah. I had to open up my PDF viewer in my, I might have to see. Go to a new share to see. Okay. It seems to be frozen. Sometimes, if you only share a pro, there it is. If you only share a program, we we'll only share that. Okay, so there's divided three ways. Okay, so this is actually probably a prime example. Um, this is super common. I mean, doing a 10 acre subdivision actually, or subdivision, you're not really even doing that, right? Yeah. You're just making the lot that you have legal. Um, we all, most oftentimes see 150 feet a piece, and so we would anticipate continue to, uh, seeing that at some point in the future down the road, as long as the zoning stays the same. Okay. And if we do that, we see these guys develop, and then you know we know these guys are talking, and these guys are talking, those guys already have, these guys already have. At some point in time, everything kind of gets jumbled, and then there isn't roads that actually connect neighbors together. Okay. So that's really the overall uh, idea. And you guys bear that burden now because we didn't ask these guys at the time. And that's the unfortunate part. Back in 1993, nobody thought anything would be happening. That was that three lot subdivisions, you know, mm -hmm. everywhere. And the pressure is on. Now the development needs to be going. So we're kind of changing our, our uh, yeah. MO, I guess. Yeah, our outlook on what's going to be needed for the future. Yeah, Frank, who owns that, Frank Lawson, who owns the property behind us and behind them as well. He has indicated he has no interest in the building at this time. But he, you have someone looking at the class and property asking questions about development not too long ago. Not that I'm aware. And maybe I'm thinking of a different one. You can pull up the um, parcel map again. Sure. Let's see here. Because we were looking at this specific property and then to the north for a mid block road uh, years ago. This is this Clausen? I don't. Yes, it is. Yes. Is that Clausen as well? No. 
It's just awesome. He owns right where that, if I understand it right, he owns all of that. Okay. And this, okay. okay. So he's got an opportunity to be farming that. So it's got quite a bit of contiguous yes. there. And he, that's what he's doing right now. Yeah. That's good. So most of the time when somebody says, I have no interest in, in developing, I say, well, how old are you? And <laughs> <laughs> well, your kids think about that. <laughs> yes, I understand. Of course, um, I understand. But uh, there are some who are actually permanently preserving their land in conservation easements. So even if after they die or retire or whatever they decide to do, um, if their kids go to pick up a property or anybody else does, they can't develop it. It just stays as a conservation easement, which the, so the cardinals. 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 I think they have one, or they're, they're talking about one. Um, who else is up there? Jensen. The Jensen, thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've talked with Marlon quite a bit. Yeah. We've, we've done some density calculations of this area and how many, how many homes could fit. Um, and now we have to go back in and redo them now that we've got several conservation easements, including the monastery, even yeah. you know, further out, uh, to say how many homes, how much density have we actually wiped out with those? That's a, it's not. It's not small feet. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. I I appreciate that. All right. No problem. Thanks. Uh, and and happy to push pause or you know continue the dialogue if you want to. That's or... fine. Let's continue. Okay. I just I just wanted to clear that up. I, that was just really when I saw it, particularly when I saw that. Whoa. Oh, was decent. Yeah. yeah. I could I could certainly see that. Now use of the property, farming of the property, all that. Fine fences, all that would be yeah. fine. Okay. Uh, just I, we would want to mitigate the public costs of having to tear things down, especially if you just built it. Right. I, I can't imagine you're you'll build a cheap barn. <laughs> well, the, the barn that's up there is not cheap yeah. already. Yeah. So. Yeah, but most of the ones up there are actually probably nicer than my home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about this. <laughs> okay. Well, um, Felix, anything to add? No, I think that covers it. Okay. Well, then um, I'm going to go ahead and approve this. So let's see. We are going to approve file UBS 070922 today, which is a one lot subdivision called the Smith Estates subdivision. Did we look at the name Smith Estates? Did the surveying look at that and say that? It seems like it would be a common name and it is uh, i've seen smith on a few of them i just don't know if i've seen smith so it's good thing i'll have to check that okay so we'll prove the subdivision regardless of what the name turns out to be okay. before the final plat gets filed um, we'll just need to make sure and check with the surveyor's office and make sure they're okay with the name okay. um the, we try not to confuse things by naming them the same thing gotcha. And then one condition uh, on this, and that is that a deferral agreement is entered into uh, in the event curb gutter and sidewalk is deemed needed in the area, that you'll share your proportionate share uh, of that, if ever. <laughs> I imagine it'll be quite a long time, if ever. Um, and uh, I'm going to just go with the um, findings of the, in the staff report. The, the proposed subdivision conforms to the Ocker Valley General Plan. The proposed subdivision complies with the applicable county codes. Any questions for us? So uh, what's the rest of the process? I know we have to get the signatures on mm -hmm. this. Yeah, so this isn't Mylar, is it? No. Okay, no. so it, um, your, who's your surveyor? This is, is Andy Hubbard. Andy Hubbard. So um, you'll have Andy print the Mylar. Well, first we'll check on the name so we don't have to print mylar twice. It's kind of expensive to print. I want Andy print a, a mylar sheet that is pretty much the same thing. At that point, you guys will sign and notarize it uh, where you where it's uh, where it indicates for owner signature and uh, notarization. Um, Andy will let stamp it and sign it, and then you'll bring it into us. Um, do we need the signatures of all those up at the bottom? We we gather those, right, Felix? Rob, yes, we would gather those. All of them? Okay. So the ones that apply are, yeah, health, planning, attorney, surveyor, and um, the county commission, we don't need the county commission, but uh, everyone else, yeah, they apply. Okay. But I'll make sure we got all those signature blocks on it. 
which this looks like it does actually look like it needs help on it. I think it helps. I think I it's saw it. It's screen. over on that other side. Oh, yeah. yeah. There it is. Yeah, so we got all the blocks for everybody. We okay. Could, yeah. Is there a Black Block for County Commission on there? Uh, yes. It'd be nice if uh, Felix, you reached out to Andy and asked him to pull it off, just so if we don't see unsigned blocks and then somebody goes down the rabbit hole to find out why. Okay. Okay. Sure. So add that as a condition in the minutes <laughs> okay. to just make sure that the, only the people who need to sign um, have signature blocks. Okay. okay. Is there a well on the property right now? Yes. Okay. And it's been there for probably two and a half years. Okay. It's, it's been there a while. Okay. Approved by the health department. Yeah. Okay. So we don't even have to ask that question. Okay. Well, good. Um, yeah. So as soon as that, uh, that mylar has been adjusted, name change, taking signature blocks of those who aren't needed off, um, Andy will print it out. You guys will sign it, get it notarized, bring it in. Felix will go get other signatures. And then Felix will call you as soon as he's ready to record. And then you guys will come down, meet with Felix, um, and then go up to the recorder's office. Uh, what's the recording be? 30? Uh, they actually upped it. It's now 55. 55 yeah. plus uh, the uh, deferral agreement. Do they charge for that or is that ours? That's ours. Okay. Yeah, we would cover that. So you'll bring in $55, get it recorded um, together with any kind of covenants that go with it, including the. Uh, uh, deferral agreement. Okay. Okay. So I can't imagine it'd be too much longer. Uh, yeah. What do you think? Pretty quick here. It's being that they've they've pretty much got a finished product here. It, it should be really any probably maybe next week even. Okay. Yeah. I think sounds so. great. Have yeah. you guys had any conversations with the assessor's office about Greenbelt? Uh, In the past, we have. I mean, it's Greenbelt, but okay. And obviously, we would uh, keep the. Where I don't understand exactly, but I, where we have built, I know that's not going to be in the green okay. belt, but we'll have approximately nine point some acres. Okay. And that will stay in the green belt. Oftentimes they look at about a quarter of an acre for the home, but if it's clear from aerial imagery or by with a drive by that there's more than a quarter of an acre that you're using for just your residential or domestic use, not for agriculture. They'll um, increase the, or oh, they'll decrease the uh, amount that they have assigned in Greenbelt. Yeah. And they started really enforcing that uh, a couple of years back. We had a few people calling saying, I've been pulled out of Greenbelt. Why? <laughs> <laughs> now I have to pay all the rollback tax. And mm -hmm. anyway, so, mm -hmm. okay. Um, I can't imagine that we'd be more than a half acre, probably more like a third, a quarter to a third acre. Would be That's fine. That's good. Okay, good. Um, there is, did this come in before the water ordinance or was this? This is, uh, this is after. Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. um, you got a copy of the well, uh, log that was originally drilled. Yeah. That's part of my, yeah. Part of my review process. Okay. Just want to make sure, um, will you guys be planting grass in your yard? Okay. So just to make sure you guys are clear and this really isn't our jurisdiction. We just try and help Weaver base now. Um, we were very, if, if you purchased one acre foot for your well for culinary uses, yep. um, from the basin that includes 8,000 square feet of dirt grass and that's it. Okay. And so if you want anything more than 8,000 square feet. Yeah. Down. <laughs> well, they do have those irrigation chairs too. That's yeah. Right that, oh, that, oh, that's right. That's right. Um, so if you're sprinkling outside and all that with your irrigation chairs, we'll let the irrigation company figure out how much water you're using and um, your responsibility for it. The other thing is, if your well doesn't currently have a meter on it, the, the ordinance requires a meter to be placed on it. And the meter needs to be um, uh, something that's essentially approved by uh, Weaver Basin. So okay. that's a newer standard that we just went into place about a year and a half ago. Okay. So, um, and they basically, it's a, it's a radio meter they, as soon as they get a critical mass of radio, radio meters on wells in the valley, they're going to set up an antenna to actually collect that data remotely. Okay. Um, and that way they can verify on an annual basis how much water has been used. And, okay. uh, so water is a, a sticky situation. It is. <laughs> no, I just, and uh, our president of our canal company just called me this morning. And, anyway, I won't. Walk you through the whole deal, but uh, 
Um, and say, like Jack Clausen and my name ended up on something that has to do with Heritage Knowles. Oh. And I, we sold our home in Heritage Knowles. We're just renting it back. And uh, I don't know how I got put on there. And Jack is really frustrated because he has nothing to do with it. Never has. Uh, 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 frustrating. Well, hopefully uh, moving out here, once you get all that taken care of, you just got yourselves in the well. And, you know, <laughs> I guess a little bit with the ditch company. But, but. okay. Any other questions for us? You have any? <laughs> 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 deep sigh of relief uh when do you guys want to pull a building permit as soon as we can okay yeah. so let's get this recorded just as quick as we can as soon as it's recorded you can file your building permit okay yeah. now does our contractor normally do that because that's what he said so it's up to you guys and how you do it most of the time we'll see contractors file on behalf of an owner okay um the building permit my recommendation for most people is to be involved. Um, okay. The way our system is set up, it, the system can assign you guys as a follower, which you'll see if you're assigned as a follower, you'll see every ping that hits the, the website for our system, basically showing status updates. Okay. Uh, it'll annoy you, but at least you'll see everything that's happening oh, and be aware. Right. Okay. Uh, I don't know who your contractor is, but I've seen too many contractors say, oh, the county's taking their time. And then when it comes down to it, uh, we took two days and the contractor took four months. <laughs> well, it's Jed Slama and we know Jed very well. Good enough, you got a good, good, good relationship. Sounds like they're without. Okay. Um, the question I was told that we have to have a SWPPP, mm -hmm. but that doesn't come until after we get. The salt it, it really doesn't matter. You can you can start with one now if you want to. Um, stormwater pollution prevention. Um, it's only for the area that you're actually disturbing. Um, and so, if you wanted to start now, you can start now. Um, and you get you pull that permit through the uh, engineering division. Okay. At the very least, if you're looking to level things off or start to dig a hole, I mean. Is that, that, no, that's right. something their contractor will do, or is that something the owner should do? Oftentimes, it's the contractor who will do that. What's mm -hmm. that? I was just asking if that's something the contractor does, and Charlie indicated that they usually will do that. I don't think it'd ruffle a lot of feathers to see dirt moving around. Uh, just <laughs> don't put any forms in until you get a vote building from it. <laughs> okay. 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 Great. Good time, okay. guys. Hey, Appreciate it. Well, good meeting you guys. Thank you very much. Do you need a signature on this, Felix? Uh, we're actually not doing signatures on this anymore. I like that. Just in oh, minutes. Yeah. I heard talk, but I didn't know that was a thing. Okay. All right. If you guys need anything or have any other questions, just let us know. But okay. Felix, uh, you're in good hands with him. Thank you. Thank you.